Greetings, everyone. I'm Dale Van de Bogart, and this is the Gospel Word. Welcome to the Gospel Word with Dale Van de Bogart, the too good to be true good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, here's Dale. Again, welcome to the Gospel Word, and I'd like to welcome everyone, especially our faithful watchers, and if you are a first-time watcher to the broadcast, well, we want to welcome you as well. Now, always, as a reminder, all our notes are in PDF, and they're located on our file-sharing site, Mediafire.com. So, on our Facebook page, and that's Facebook.com slash bdbm.org. Just look in the features section, scroll to the right, uh, and uh, and open the Gospel Word. And just uh, click on the link and start downloading all of our notes for all of our my uh, all of our Gospel Word slash My Thoughts series. Okay, great. Now what we're gonna do? We're gonna start our new three week series called. To know is to grow. And our foundation Bible passage comes from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Now this week's segment of the first three is called The Christian's Life Begins with Faith. And I'm going to discuss how faith is in a person and how it involves God's power and promises. So, grab your Bibles, open up to 2 Peter chapter 1, and we're just going to, for this segment, we'll do the first four verses. So, now what I want you, I want you to understand what the word knowledge really means. So if anybody in the early church knew the importance of being alert, well, it was the Apostle Peter. See, he had a tendency in his early years to feel overconfident when danger was near, and to overlook Jesus' warnings. Now, he rushed ahead when he should have waited. He slept when he should have prayed. He talked when he should have listened. Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? Now, he was courageous, but a careless Christian. Now, eventually, he learned his lesson, like we all do. And he wants to help us to learn that lesson also. Now, in his first epistle, Peter emphasized the grace of God, which we found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 12. But in the second letter, he emph the emphasis is on the knowledge of God. See, the word know or knowledge is used at least 13 times. The word does not mean a mere intellectual understanding of some truth. It means a living experience in the truth and in the sense that our Lord used it in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 3, when he said, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the, one, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. See, Peter opened his letter with a description of the Christian life. Before he described the counterfeits, he described the true believers. The best way to detect falsehood is to understand the characteristics of the truth. And Peter made three important affirmations about the true Christian life, which we're going to read in these four verses, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit further. All right, so you have your Bibles open, 2 Peter chapter 1, first four verses. Here we go. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. 
grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given us to, uh, to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given to us exceedingly and precious promises, that though these may be uh, partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, let me, let me go through this for just a moment here. Let's go. Uh, Peter called it like precious faith. It means our standing with, with the Lord today is in the same as the apostles centuries ago. See, they had no special advantage over us simply because they were privileged to walk with Jesus and see him with their own eyes and share in his miracles. See, it is not necessary to see the Lord with our human eyes in order to love and trust him and share his glory. Now let's discuss this faith Peter talks about. Now, first of all, this faith is in a person, and that person is in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. From the very onset of his letter, Peter affirmed the deity of Jesus Christ as God and our Savior are not two different persons. They are described one person, Jesus Christ. Now, a Savior is one who brings salvation. And the word salvation was familiar to the people of that day. In their vocabulary, it meant deliverance from trouble, particularly deliverance from the enemy. It also carried the idea of health and safety. It requires a little insight to see how the title Savior applies to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, in Psalm 103, verse 3, he is the great physician who heals the heart from the sickness of sin. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, he is the victorious conqueror who has defeated our enemies sin, death, Satan, hell, and is leading us in triumph. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, he is the God or Lord and our Savior. Now, in order to be our Savior, he had to give his life on the cross and die for the sins of the world. Jesus has three spiritual commodities that can be secured from no one, nobody else, only the Lord Jesus Christ. First off is righteousness. Remember, righteousness is being in right standing with God. So when you trust him as your Savior, his righteousness becomes your righteousness. See, you can never earn it because it's a gift from God. Second of all of the commodities is grace. And it's God's favor to the undeserving. And we're all undeserving of it. See, God in his mercy does not give us what we do deserve. God in his grace gives us what we don't deserve. And then last of all, the commodities is peace. Ooh, peace. Love it. The result of this experience is peace with God. We find in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. In fact, God's grace and peace are multiplied towards us as we walk with him and trust in his promises. Now, the second of this faith that Peter talks about, it involves God's power. Now, the Christian life begins with saving faith in the person of Jesus Christ. And when you start knowing Jesus Christ personally, 
you will also experience God's power. This power produces life and godliness. Now, the unsaved sinner is spiritually dead, as we re read in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And only Jesus can raise them from the dead. So, get rid of those grave clothes. You don't need them anymore because you are now a new person. Jesus has raised you from being spiritually dead to being spiritually alive. So when you are born into the family of God by faith in Jesus Christ, you are born completely or complete. God gives you everything you will need for life and godliness. Nothing has to be added. Just as a normal baby is born with all the equipment it needs for life and only needs to grow, so the Christian has all that it, it is needed and only needs to grow. See, God has never called you back because something is lacking or faulty. And again, you know, and again, in this, you are the you are the new person in Jesus Christ. See, the grace of God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. In Colossians chapter three, verses twelve through fourteen, the apostle Paul reminds us of what God's grace has done for us. And he has four things. First, he chose us. So the word elect in these verses means chosen by God. If God saved, uh, saved a sinner on the basis of merit or works, nobody would be saved. None of us. We wouldn't have salvation. See, it's all done through God's grace that it might, that it might all bring glory to God. The second thing, the second thing that Paul talks about is that he sets us apart. See, this is where we get the, the meaning of the word holy. Holy means to be set apart from God. So we've been set apart from the world to the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we do not belong to ourselves. We belong to Jesus. The third is that God loves us. No matter how good we are, no matter how bad we are, no matter what we've ever done in our lives, God loves us. And as a believer grows in their love for God, they will grow in, in, in their desire to obey Him and walk in the newness of life that we have in Jesus Christ. And, and number four, He forgave us. See, God's forgiveness is complete and final. It's not partial. There's no partial forgiveness or I'll forgive you for for this lot of things, but I won't forgive you for this lot of things. No. See, see, God's forgiveness is complete and final. Total. Now, how is a holy God able to forgive us? Because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's the only, that was, that was it. Done. Jesus is the last sacrifice. There are no more sacrifices. We don't, don't need any sacrifices. Jesus did it all on the cross. Debt paid. Done. See, we took off the old self of our of all sorts of sin and put on that new self. And I have a preacher friend of mine who once told me, oh yeah, take off that old self, throw it in the trash, and set it on fire. <laughs> tell me that, and I just couldn't stop laughing. But you know, it's the truth. You don't want to go back to that old self. You don't want to put that old self back on. No, 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 no. You accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, so you got that new self. And Paul mentions we must put on these eight beautiful graces of the Christian life. And these eight are one, tender mercies, being compassionate towards one another. Uh, kindness, showing kindness, showing, you know, God showed kindness towards us, but we need to return it to others. Humbleness, thinking of others first and not ourselves. Meekness, power under control. Long-suffering, being cool under pressure. 
forbearance, hold back judgment of others. Forgiveness. God forgave us for a multitude of sins, so we must forgive others as well. And the last and the most important of these eight is love. And it's the most important virtue of Christians. See, without love, we can't have or show the, the first seven I just talked about. Okay? We are also called to virtue. See, we've been saved so we might show forth the praises or virtues of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that was in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. So in our character and conduct now, we should reveal his beauty and grace. And the last of the faiths that, Paul, that Peter talks about in these four verses involves God's promises. So God has not only given us what we need for life and godliness, but he's also given us his word to enable us to develop this life and godliness. See, these promises are great because they come from a great God and they lead to a great life. And they are precious because their value is beyond calculation. See, if we lost the word of God, there'd be no way to replace it. When a sinner believes in Jesus Christ and and becomes born again, it's like a baby that shares the nature of its parents. A person born of God shares the divine nature of God. So a lost sinner is dead, but the Christian is alive, because they are sharing in the divine nature of God. The lost sinner is decaying because of their corrupt nature, but the Christian can experience a dynamic life of godliness because they have God's divine nature within. Mankind is under the bondage of corruption. We read in Romans chapter 8, verse 21. But the, divine, but the believer shares in the freedom and growth that is a part of possessing the divine nature. So, we possess this divine nature. We have completely escaped as we read in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, the defilement and decay of this present evil world. If we feel the new nature, uh, the nourishment of the word, or if we feed the new nature, the nourishment of the word, then we will have little interest in the garbage of the world. And there's a lot of garbage sitting out there, believe me. If we make provisions for the flesh, as in Romans chapter 13, verse 14, our sinful nature will lust after the old sins, as we read in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 9. See, we will disobey God. See, godly living is the result of cultivating. That means digging up, keep moving, and, and getting ready, getting, getting the fields ready. We used to get fields ready when I was growing up. And I lived on a farm. We used to cultivate the land so we could plant new, new, new crops. So we can plant everything new. Well, that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to read the Word, cultivate it into our hearts, so we can cultivate it into other people. And as all of that cultivation, that that cultivating, that the new nature inside of us within. Amen. That means reading our Bible, picking it up, reading it, studying it. Not just be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word as well. That is good cultivating your heart and, culti and, and cultivating yourself as the new person in Jesus Christ. Wow. Again, amen. And I'm Dale Vandebogart, and I fully agree on God's word. And if you're watching this for the first time, and, and you want your you want to have that Christian life that begins with faith and you want to cultivate your heart to have that new person so you can show all these new beautiful graces that you've been blessed with by the Lord Jesus Christ well what are you waiting for you know you can go to our Facebook page right now
facebook.com slash bbbn.org and in the features section we have a, a section called free gifts you know open that up and read it and at the bottom we have a prayer and if you read that prayer from your heart seriously you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today right now right now and then your Christian life can start with faith amen Hallelujah. Congratulations. Welcome to the family. Your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You can, you can, you can always go to our Facebook page, click on the Media Fire link, and, and start, reading, uh, start reading some of our, or actually read all of our notes up there, and you will start growing in Christ. You will start growing to love God more and more each day. So like I said, you will you will not just be a hearer of the word, you will be a doer of the word as well. Now, in the future here, very shortly, we will have some pamphlets up there that will help you and assist you in your walk with Jesus Christ. So you may grow exceedingly and abundantly in his great and precious promises and in your walk with Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you right now. Father Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus and, and, your, and, and, your, precious, and your precious name, Father, and the precious name of Jesus. And we just thank you for this broadcast. And we thank you for everyone watching. Father, bless each and every one of them as they continue in their walk with Jesus Christ. And if there's someone within the sound of my voice who has never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, may today be the day that they experience saving faith. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your word. Father, may each and every one grow exceedingly and abundantly in their faith and in their Christian walk, Father. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Wow. I want to thank everyone for watching this video and the other videos we have up on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe also. We have many of them. They are free to watch. You can go to our, 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 our media fire site, download them. They're also free of charge as well. So, Again, we want to thank you for watching. We hope you received a huge blessing from this, from this segment and the other segments. And we just want to just say that, that God loves you. We love you. Be blessed.